Hi folks, so this is just going to be a short follow-up video to the video I recorded yesterday about the Nokia 105 and the Nokia uh, 106, um, but I've got the, the Oak Castle phone that uh, I talked about, I think I might have mentioned it in the video, uh, which is what I was going to be looking at subsequently as a non-IKEA phone. Now this was a little bit cheaper, so expectations weren't as high. This is the uh, Oak Castle F100 dual SIM basic simple mobile phone with LED torch, uh, headphone jack, music player, FM radio, Bluetooth classic games included. Mm -hmm. uh, pay as you go, seven day battery life. Uh, so this is the first impressions and um, and I don't think I'm going to be sticking with it, which is why I'm just going to be giving you a sort of a bit of a rundown of it. The phone does not feel necessarily as high a quality as the Nokia's, but if you're looking for a cheap sort of maybe a backup phone or something like that, that's not really going to matter. And it doesn't feel terrible. It just feels like... You know, well, it just feels like a step down in quality from the build of the of the Nokia 105 and 106, which is what you might expect at a slightly lower price point. Um, it's a lot more basic in terms of the display, uh, which is fine, um, and it does do the basics as you would expect. Uh, I haven't tested out things like the um, the FM radio, the music player, the headphone jack, because those are not things that I'm interested in. I'm literally looking for calls and uh, text. Um, it looks fine for that kind of thing, although I don't know if I'd want to use it if I texted with any degree of uh, frequency, to be honest. It might even be, you know, better going back to the smartphone for that kind of thing with the better keyboard. Um, and I think I'm going to carry on looking for a good phone that just does the phone and text really well and maybe nothing else, I think. However, the thing is, and the reason I'm, I'm making this video is because it also has the pre-installed games that you still have to pay to uh, unlock. So it doesn't, so it says here classic games included. There are no classic games included. You have to pay for them all. Uh, now, the slightly less egregious thing about that is that they're all behind the games menu. If you have no interest in games and are not opening up the games menu, then you can sort of ignore it, pretend it isn't there. There's no way to deactivate it or uninstall it. Um, this is a um, uh, 2G uh, mobile phone. Yeah, 2G cellular. Uh, phone as opposed to GSM what we have here in the UK all things considered though I look at my old 3310 the old original 3310 which doesn't have like the it doesn't have as good a battery life compared to even something like this or, or the Nokia's I'm thinking well you know it look it's looking pretty good if all things considered the only thing that puts me off it is that to get replacement parts nowadays you can't really get them from nokia you can maybe get some second hand old nokia parts on ebay um but a lot of the the replacement batteries and charges and stuff uh they they come from like not necessarily the most like well known of of um of, of, of you know retailers so I do kind of feel that sometimes, uh, you know, it is possible you might be taking a gamble on the quality and more importantly, the safety of some of the batteries and chargers. Um, so, um, and as someone who is not really an expert in that side of electronics, I, I don't know if that's something that I really want to gamble and risk. Uh, there are, like I say, uh, actual Nokia parts around, but these are old Nokia parts from, from years ago. Um, so I'm going to be chewing over that and thoughts on that. I'd be happy with uh, down in the comment section below, please. And, uh, yeah, I was actually quite surprised to see as many people as I was actually like either having similar uh, experiences with Nokia or, um, or, or or like sort of, you know, un, um, uh, sort of elaborating on reasons why it may have, you know, like things happening in the Nokia company, for example, that uh, may be leading to these kind of decisions. And also this idea of like, you know, a company being once quite reputable and qu quite good at what it does, often sort of riding on that reputation, um when it may not necessarily be carrying over time. So uh, it is a little bit sad. I'm still quite disappointed that like, I'm still on the look for like a really good solid uh, feature phone handset. It probably wasn't going to be this because it was just a bit on the cheap side thinking about it in hindsight now. Um, but, um, you know, I'm thinking, well, maybe like if there's a good quality handset, I might pay uh, a fair bit more for it, quite a bit more for like a good quality handset if it's good to talk on, if I can talk at like a length, if I can have a nice, you know, hour long conversation with someone, um, and it's, you know, it's, it's, I can hear them clearly. The microphone picks me up well enough. Uh, and so I'm not even necessarily looking for the smallest handset. It doesn't necessarily have to be super compact. This, whilst it's about the same size as many phones in, in the bracket, it's about the same size as the Nokia's. And it's a touch on the small side. Like I get it. It's good for portability. And as a portable device, that's quite good. But maybe, 
Uh, and I might be looking at maybe those phones that you get to like old people whose uh, eyesight might be fading in time and who may not necessarily have any interest in keeping up with modern technological standards and just want something that's got big buttons, loudspeaker, you know, so you can so you can hear it and just very simple um, basic functionality. Like, I don't know, maybe this is an age thing on my part. Maybe I want an old person phone now. I d maybe I do. <laughs> I've seen some pretty decent handsets that kind of look a lot like you know, normal wireless phones with a charger that slides into a base. Um, and you might think of them, they, they look like the wireless landline phones, but actually are mobile phones. Uh, so you don't even necessarily have to uh, go in for line rental if uh, all you want is just a phone and a text messaging device, which is, in fact, I don't even know if they do text messaging. They might, it might just literally be a mobile phone. Um, in which case, interesting. Yeah, I might, um, could be, uh, it could be. I could just have a separate number, a separate line, just for like long conversations on the phone with people who I typically only speak with on the phone. I don't know. It's a, it's a thought for it. I'm not the biggest fan of speaking on the handsets with the uh, smartphones uh, because, you know, the thing that you put all your, your, you know, greasy, filthy fingers on all day and then you just whack it up on the side of your head just doesn't feel particularly hygienic to me. And I don't know if that's just me being a bit of a germaphobe or anything like that. But anyway, I thought I might share my thoughts because um, the journey continues and it's j continuing at a brisk pace. So it's not an in-depth review on the Oak Castle, I'm afraid, but um, just a first impressions. If you want something that will get you out of an emergency, that's kind of fine. Just be wary of the pre-installed pre uh, the, the pre games that are not activated unless you, you buy them. Uh, it didn't tell me how much they were um, when I went in that far into the menu. So I, I don't know if they're cheaper or, or, or anything like that. Uh, I did actually try a um, one of the games. Uh, they give you like five goes at a free trial. It's rubbish. It's it's exactly what you'd expect from a mobile phone game. The It's, it's quite audacious of them to ask you for money for, for those games. Either don't include them in the phone or just include them for free like i don't understand why what what this nickel and diming is with feature phones why there has to be pre-installed games that you pay for like is is it is, is that sort of subsidizing the cost of the phone right because i'd rather pay more for a phone without without, without the games on it right maybe there's some uh, hack developer out there that wants to make a shitty game um and and they just they instead of actually you know selling to people um, they just do a business to business. They, you know, they make a deal with Nokia saying, you know, we'll pay, you know, we'll pay you. So, you know, or we'll underwrite part of the cost of the, the phone. If you include our shitty games on your phone, as I, I imagine that's kind of how it works. They're just keeping production costs down by making deals with shitty game developers. If you couldn't call them game developers, these are barely games. And it's not, you know, it's the, like you're playing a game on a handset. Who would do that? really it's ridiculous anyway thank you folks very much for joining me um not necessarily the most interesting of, of videos i guess but um just wanted to i don't know give you an update on the journey of my um my search for a good solid feature phone at the moment i'm still on the smartphone and it's not you know like to be fair it's looking better every day so far i think the feature phone market is taking advantage of a particular uh, you know, like a particular use case, I guess. Maybe, maybe, maybe they're thinking, oh, this is the type of phone you might keep in the glove box of a car for emergencies. And it's like, oh, you're waiting for a for a breakdown engineer at uh, or a breakdown mechanic at like ten in the in the evening on the side of a horrible rainy, you know, on the side of a road on a horrible rainy day, and the only thing you've got is bloody snake or something, and you pay five pounds to, you know, it, it feels like they're sort of manufacturing a little bit of a, I don't know. I feel that that's just what they had in mind. Anyway, I'm rambling now, but thank you guys very much for joining me. As always, please let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Toodaloo.